Hi, Rich Powell from ClearPath. By now, you know that any transition to a clean energy economy will require thousands of miles of upgraded transmission lines, new power plants, and dozens of major new pipelines carrying clean hydrogen and captured carbon dioxide. Today, we wanted to share a bit about the importance of hydrogen and carbon dioxide pipelines. Once widely deployed, they will be fundamental to the safe delivery of reliable, clean energy across the United States. Here's the thing. If we want to meet our nation's emissions goals, we'll need a diverse mix of energy solutions. Capturing carbon dioxide from the source of emissions or taking it directly out of the atmosphere will be a huge part of the solution. So will the use of more clean hydrogen. The United States will need a massive build-out of new pipeline infrastructure to get the captured CO2 and hydrogen where it needs to go. Pipelines are the most efficient way to move large quantities of gas and liquid commodities. Currently, the U.S. has over 2.6 million miles of pipelines that safely deliver energy to fuel our homes, offices, and vehicles. There are about 1,600 miles of hydrogen pipelines in the U.S. today, most of which are used in chemical production, oil refining, and fertilizer production, and not as an energy source. For clean hydrogen to be used as energy, we need a broader interstate pipeline network. Likewise, it's projected that CO2 alone will require over 96,000 miles of CO2 transportation infrastructure over the next 25 years. That includes almost 4,000 miles of new pipeline per year. This may sound like a lot. Driving from Seattle to Miami is only 3,300 miles, but it's certainly achievable with the right policies. On average, the U.S. has been building 19,000 miles of pipeline a year for the past 70 years. It's also important to note these are rarely the long interstate pipelines you may read about in the news. Most pipelines in the U.S. are just a few miles. One project that has caught our attention is the Navigator CO2 pipeline, which has the potential to deliver 15 million tons per year of captured CO2 from ethanol facilities in five Midwestern states. At full capacity, this proposed 1,300-mile transportation network will have huge climate impacts with the ability to store the equivalent carbon dioxide of 3.2 million cars. Also in the Midwest, the proposed Wolf CO2 pipeline would connect some of ADM's largest ethanol processing facilities with carbon storage capabilities and would be able to transport 12 million tons of CO2 per year. Another exciting project is Air Products Clean Energy Complex in Louisiana. Starting in 2025, Air Products is looking to use its extensive hydrogen pipeline network, currently the largest in the world, to produce 750 million cubic feet of hydrogen per day that will be used by consumers on the U.S. Gulf Coast and shipped internationally to global hydrogen markets. This is another win-win project because in addition to producing clean hydrogen, the plant plans to capture 95% of the facility's carbon dioxide emissions. As more projects are announced, there will be increased urgency to clarify the permitting process. Unlike natural gas pipelines, today there is no clear regulatory body for CO2 or large-scale interconnected hydrogen pipeline systems. Additional regulatory clarity is necessary to assist the widespread deployment of these and similar projects. What we do know, it's safe. CO2 pipelines have one of the strongest safety records of all energy transmission systems in the U.S., far surpassing even electric transmission and distribution systems. Folks should know we've been transporting CO2 by pipeline for over 40 years on our nation's 5,000 miles of CO2 pipeline infrastructure, and with increased investment and research in the technology, this record will surely continue to improve. To give you context, there may be hundreds of incidents a year with electric transmission lines. Since 2010, there have been less than 100 total, all non-fatal, CO2 and hydrogen pipeline incidents. If we advance smart policies and increase investments in innovation, we can continue to build more clean energy. Thanks for listening.